and welcome to the D'Agostini Model Space Paint the Millennium Falcon with Steve Dimzo. In this fourth and final segment, we will show you how to apply the final weathering and fine detailing that will make your model look great. If you follow these instructions carefully, the result will be a model of which you can be proud, just like in the pictures you're seeing here. Let's get started. I want to talk about one of the final little details that you're going to put on the model, which actually is pretty big because you're going to put it all over the model. That's called spattering. When we went to the archive and spent several days with the original filming miniature, one of the things that we noticed that really jumps out at you when you're really staring at the model close up is that there are yellow and gray and black spatters all over the surface of the model, on the top side and the underside, but a little less on the underside actually. Unfortunately, it's not visible in many photographs um, I suspect because of the flash photography or just the abilities of the camera at that time. But since we were able to spend uh, several days with the filming miniature and examine it up close, it was very, very obvious to the naked eye that it was there. I want to show you an example of where you can see that, what we saw, and it's this book, Sculpting the Galaxy. As the reference shows, the model is extensively covered with a series of little splatter marks, which are range from pretty small to fairly large, about a quarter inch in diameter. And from what I can tell, there's three basic colors. There's a light gray, a darker gray, and a orangey yellow rusty color. And we're gonna mix those up and show you how to apply those to one section of the ship. So to demonstrate how to apply the spatter effect, we're gonna take our little sector of the ship that is primarily finished, about 95%. As you can see, I've made a few more orbits around the model and added a few more details, and I will most likely come back here and do some more cleanup later. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna just show you how to do the spatter effect now. So we're gonna take our toothbrush and dip it in this paint. I've thinned out a mixture of gray and black, very, very thin, like 90% paint thinner. And don't immediately spatter it onto the ship, otherwise you're gonna turn your model black. So you wanna get some scrap card material and you just wanna shoot off most of it. Now you can start spraying it on the model, otherwise it would be way too severe and look ridiculous. You gotta really play with the color density and everything. So the very light gray coat has dried here and now we're gonna apply this rusty yellow. I've mixed equal parts of rust and flat yellow together and then thinned it again with about 90% thinner. And you'll have to play with this on the test card first, like we said before, because sometimes you just don't get the color quite right. And once you apply it to the model, you're pretty much done. You can't take it back, so make sure you practice first. And of course, the harder you stroke the toothbrush, the more intensely the dots are going to come off. So just do it lightly at first if you're not sure of yourself. And you can adjust your distance from the surface back and forth until you get it about where you like it to. And remember that it's not shooting straight down either. So this is another argument for painting and assembling the model completely first instead of doing it in sections because as you apply this technique, if you choose to do so, it's going to go on to other sections. If you only build the model in segments and paint each one and then glue it together later, you won't really be able to do this effectively. So this definitely requires the model being built and painted before you apply it, which is how ILM did it. In examining the original filming miniature, it became very obvious, and in reference pictures that have been posted in books and on the internet, that the model was completely built before it was painted, and then it was painted in one big shot. So if you want to do it authentic to the original, you want to build and paint the base coat on the model first, and then apply all the coloring. Here I'm applying the final, which is a light, slightly darker gray-black color. I just want to do some more accented and that has most of the paint taken off the brush already so it's just a little teeny bit and there you go so this is a good example of a technique that you don't have to be michelangelo to apply but 
it's actually very authentic on the original model. So it's pretty simple, just flicking paint off a toothbrush. Just have fun with it and don't sweat the every little micro position of every dot because you'll never get it anyway. So just have fun with it. Now, if for any reason you don't feel comfortable with applying the spatter or any of the levels of the weathering, you can always seal what you have done so far with a clear flat acrylic or a clear flat lacquer or even a clear gloss if you want to overcoat coat it with a clear flat later. So you could use Future, very thin down if you wanted to, or straight out of the bottle. That would create a lot of gloss that you'll have to cut later. But in any of those cases, that'll provide a hard surface over whatever you've done previously. And then if you apply the next layer and you don't feel comfortable or you don't like what you did with it, you can always wipe it off with a solvent and start over again. So that's just a tip that uh, might make you feel a little more comfortable as you move around the model with the different weathering techniques. Another detail covering the filling miniature are about 30 or 40 of these little black blast marks. Now uh, what I've done is I've used the reference pictures to pre-locate them and I've made little X's with a pencil because we're going to paint over it anyway. And that way I can adjust, come back, look at them, make sure I'm happy with them. Once you shoot them, they're very hard to come back and fix. So I've made the little X, and one of the details when you get really, really close up on these things is that there's a little black hot spot in the middle with a lighter gray halo around it. So what I'm going to do next is go in with a Sharpie and just draw in the little black hot spot. We'll do those two as an example, and then that one. Okay. Then we're going to come in with the airbrush and make the halo. So we're going to start applying the airbrush blast marks. As I mentioned, there's a little hot spots from the Sharpie, and I've been adjusting the airbrush on a, paint, a piece of painted plastic, because obviously you want to practice on something that's as close to the surface as possible. So this is a test piece, and it's got several coats of paint on it, because the painted surface is going to absorb the airbrush paint differently than if you spray it on a piece of plastic card, for example. So I've just been airbrush testing little spots. I'm going to come at it with 100% air and then just intensify a little bit. And there you go. I've been doing a lot of the shading with various thin gray uh, enamel, but I know for a fact that ILM used to me a smoke on a lot of their filming miniatures. And that's an acrylic. And as I mentioned, I'm spraying this model all in enamels, but if you happen to be doing all acrylics or a combination of both, this is a handy paint to have. It's very common, and they sprayed it on most of the filming miniatures in the original trilogy. So it's a, a good authentic color that still looks exactly like it did back in the 70s. Now we're gonna spray some of the circular details on the model, like these vents. All of them get a very dark, gray accent to them. So the easiest way to do this is just to use a circle template, match up the circle size that goes to the part that you're going to spray, and then I mask the area off around it. Just apply it on top of that part and airbrush. And there you go. Perfectly round thing, no masking tape. Very simple to do. Took what, 10 seconds? Another last detail that we want to discuss and point out to you is that once you get your reference pictures, you will see, or even online pictures, you see that there's lots of these black dots all over the bottom of the model. They're not on the top. So I don't know why they decided to put these on the bottom and not the top, but if we're gonna make an accurate replica, we gotta replicate them. So by my reckoning, they're about 7 64ths of an inch in diameter, and I've pre-marked some spots with a pencil just so I can make sure I'm happy with the locations before I airbrush. And next, we're going to use the circle template as a mask to airbrush them. Normally, spraying these dots would be probably the last step that I would do when I'm detailing the bottom of the model. 
but for the purposes of this video, we're going to do it on the unpainted finished model now. We're holding the ship upright because I have to spray the airbrush straight at it. And when I put this circle template on top of the surface, I'm not touching it. I'm, I'm going to hold it a hair above it because if you really look at super close-up pictures of the circles, they're not razor sharp. They have a little bit of fog around them. So that's exactly what they look like. A sharp line with a fog around it. And you'll notice when you get your reference pictures that the dots vary quite a bit. Some are sharper, some are real foggy, and some are extremely foggy. So you don't have to agonize over the density of each dot. Just get them so they look good. So as you can see, there's a pretty stark contrast between the areas that just have the Tamiya Insignia white sprayed on there. And then once you get the 10 layers of colors all sitting on top of each other, and creating this final effect that hits your eye. Um, it's really hard, as I mentioned in the beginning of the videos, to figure out what the base color is because of all the layering and the blast marks and the streaks. So that's why I said don't agonize over the base color because you're gonna go from this to this if you actually do all the paint steps. In the close-up, you can definitely see the spattering, but when you stand five, six feet away, it sort of all blends together and creates an overall effect. We can use the same circle template technique to spray the rear vents on the ship. There's two colors in the vents, so I'm going to apply a dark gray first. Look at that. That's cool. Then we're just going to go over the dark gray with black because the original vents are two different colors. So we're just going to do like a sort of like that. You don't want just straight color in there. You want a little bit of contrast, like some shading kind of thing going on. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of black. It's very subtle, but it's definitely on the original model. And just don't spray the whole thing black because then you wiped out the gray that you sprayed. And there you go. From five feet away, it just looks like one color, but up close you can see there's some speculation in the color, which is what we're trying to achieve. So, mission accomplished. Here I'm spraying up the rear deck, and a couple things I want to note here. I'm using a dark gray for the weathering, not black, because the black would be a bit garish. The nice thing with the gray, gray-black, is you can build it up in coats if you're not happy but if you start with black, then you're too dark already. So I've noticed on a lot of people's models, they tend to really blacken this area up, and it's not like that on the filming miniature. It's certainly dark and streaky, but not to the point where it's just big black spray marks coming out of here. So we want to do it subtle. So here's also, using our reference pictures, there's a few occasional panels woo, that are, um, darker than the surrounding area. So I'm gonna go in with there. Start with almost 100% air and then move my double action back to do that. And you also notice that these areas are sprayed as if the smoke was coming out of the exhaust or something and overlapping it. So make sure you paint the backs of each of these with a little bit of the, the gray. And Obviously this is heavily thin, so as it dries, it's gonna lighten quite a bit. So that's also an advantage of starting with a thin gray. And a few general areas here. But again, the rear deck is definitely not black. A lot of people just spray the heck out of this spot and then it just stands out and looks kind of garish. So subtlety is the key to finishing this area. There's also some very subtle, but definitely there, rust highlights on the model. So I'm gonna apply them. Two other details I'd like to point out while we're on the deck before we leave this area. One is the bluish stripe that you see. It's on both sides of the raised area of the deck. It's very rough, just roughly airbrushed on there. And it is definitely on both sides. 
And as far as I know, it's the only place on this model where there's a blue color. So I just use some Blue Angels Blue, which is dark blue, and mix it with a little medium gray until it sort of matched the pictures. And then I airbrushed it on there and then sanded around it. The other last detail is these countersunk Allen screws. On the original filming miniature, they didn't even try to hide them. They're just like, we don't care, they're there. They're on both sides, there's six of them in total. And in the filming miniature, you would remove these and this entire deck would remove and they could get access to the halogen lights if they burned out and any other attendant wiring, etc., etc. So that's why the countersunk screws are here. A couple other very easy modifications we can make to the center disc assembly to make it a little more accurate. Uh, in part one, we discussed moving the window, so that's already been done. We've also added a couple button head Allen screws here. These are 440 black oxide. They're molded on the model as a sort of soft detail, but I just took a 564th drill bit, drilled two holes and screwed them right in. They didn't even have to be tapped. So pretty simple. That took all of five minutes to fix. And the last thing is these blast marks. They're not quite in the right location on the model as produced. So as I mentioned in the first part, I filled them in I ended up using Zap to fill them in because they were a little deeper than I wanted to go with the putty. And so these have been already filled, sanded, and body color painted on here. So I'm going to go in with a Dremel with a ball end mill and just engrave the correct locations in. So that I don't mess them up, I've marked them out with a Sharpie first and checked the reference pictures to make sure I got them in the right place. I'm just going to follow the pattern. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, the original filming model, these raised panels were a black plastic. So if you Dremel through them, they need to be black on the inside. And since our model is gray, tan, whatever, I'm gonna go in and just paint in a flat black to simulate that plastic underneath. And then the last thing we're going to do is airbrush a little dark gray scorching around the blast marks to complete the ensemble. And again, we're going to airbrush a dark gray around them. Not black, because black's a little bit intense. Hey, if you remember back in part one, I had mentioned that back in seventh grade, Alex Mischuk got a AMT Klingon battle cruiser in black plastic. And I was very jealous, begged him to trade for it, he wouldn't do it. I've been very, very distraught over the last 40 years about that. Well, about two weeks after we made part one, I found something on eBay that I thought was very interesting. You know, there's a Klingon proverb, Alex. It says, revenge is a dish best served cold and black. It's very black in space. Well, except for nebulas, they're not black. And quasars and stars and stuff like that. But other than that, it's pretty black in space. So eat it, Alex. So what have we learned? In summary, we've learned we can use a Dremel tool to engrave little blast marks. We've learned that we can replace molded plastic screws with real screws on the model. We've learned some unusual airbrushing techniques like splooches. Uh, we've learned that we can use the toothbrush spatter technique to accentuate panels and make the model more authentic. And in general, we've learned just to have fun with it. Don't agonize over the micro details and the placement of every little dot, but just have fun with it and make something that you can be proud of to display and show off to your friends. So I hope you've enjoyed the series and thanks for watching.